What if the gods of our ancestors were not divine beings, but flesh and blood aliens mistaken for deities due to their advanced technology and knowledge? Was our evolution really influenced or even guided by extraterrestrial intelligence, as the ancient alien theories suggest? And most importantly, if our ancestors were indeed visited and led by extraterrestrial races, does this celestial connection continue and can they come back again? We will find out in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. In our human history, there are countless stories and records that defy conventional explanations, mysterious structures, inexplicable technologies, and ancient texts make us question our origins as humanity. Among all the mysteries of antiquity lies one hypothesis that seems to be starting to look more and more real, the theory of ancient extraterrestrials. This theory claims that our planet has been visited by various advanced alien races for thousands, perhaps millions of years. These alien visitors have created our human species through genetic manipulation and knowledge of the universe. And the earliest known civilizations may not be simply the product of human evolution and ingenuity, but could also bear the imprint of a distant extraterrestrial civilization. From the great pyramids of Giza to the ancient Sumerian texts that describe the Anunnaki, from the precise stone carvings of Machu Picchu to the massive geoglyphs etched in the Nazca Desert, there's a myriad of evidence that proponents of the ancient alien theory point to. But as we unravel this cosmic threat, questions that are impossible to ignore begin to take shape. Could it be that the myths and legends of our ancient past, filled with tales of gods coming from the sky, are actually just misinterpreted encounters with advanced alien visitors? Were the pyramids and other monolithic structures built using extraterrestrial technology far beyond the capabilities of time? Could it be that the detailed star charts, advanced mathematical knowledge, and surprisingly accurate astronomical data possessed by ancient civilizations were a legacy of extraterrestrial teachers? Many ancient mythologies speak of a highly developed celestial intelligence that has interacted with our planet since time immemorial. In the Bible, this information is gathered in the accounts of the sons of God, or Elohim, which is the plural for many celestial humanoids who coexisted with the evolving earthly primitive man in antediluvian times. After years of intense searching and consideration of today's new evidence, we can now say that these ancient Elohim who came down to Earth were our ancient heavenly human ancestors, who biogenically engineered today's human species known as Homo sapiens sapiens. It is believed that ancient people's interest in the celestial began to increase when they settled down in permanent communities. This interest is manifested in the form of huge structures built of earth and stone, probably intended for precise observations of the heavens. But why did these early civilizations put such enormous resources into erecting gigantic monumental structures just to observe the stars? Was all that work just for the purpose of astronomical research? Why were these ancient monuments that are located all over the planet built? And how did the ancient civilizations have such precise knowledge that they put into their construction? If we consider various ancient texts from different cultures around the world, many of them tell stories of mysterious celestial beings riding in chariots of fire and bestowing cosmic wisdom on mankind. One such example is the Mahabharata, an ancient Indian epic comparable to the Bible. This text is full of accounts of divine beings crisscrossing the sky in glorious golden vimanas or celestial ships. This epic goes into surprising detail, describing these vimanas as metallic structures capable of being invisible, narratives that echo modern science fiction very well. But it is not only in Indian mythology that such descriptions appear. Similar stories can be found on different continents in South American, Asian, and Egyptian mythologies. These accounts often refer to celestial beings arriving on Earth aboard so-called space eggs. 
The cosmic egg motif is an element present in most global creation myths. These stories often describe a moment when the heavens crack open and a similar cosmic egg descends from the sky. From it emerged gods who then imparted various forms of knowledge to mankind. But are these just elaborate myths invented by our imaginative ancestors, or might they contain some extraterrestrial truth? The Popol Vuh, also known as the Book of the People, is a foundational text of the Mayan civilization. According to the story, the two main characters were demigods who ascended to the heavens to become the sun and the moon after their victory over the lords of Zibalba, the underworld. Before their final ascent, they engaged in various battles with these dark forces that sought to keep humanity in confusion and fear. The victory of the twins is seen as the triumph of light, knowledge, and order over darkness and chaos. From the perspective of the ancient astronaut theory, the account of the twin heroes and their journey to the heavens may symbolize more than a mythical story. Could the twins' ascent to the heavens be interpreted as a journey to the stars or even an interaction with extraterrestrial life? Given that the Maya had incredibly advanced astronomical knowledge for their time, including the ability to predict lunar and solar eclipses and the movements of Venus, we can speculate that this knowledge may indeed have come from an external, possibly extraterrestrial source. Eric von Däniken is a Swiss author and researcher, best known for his books The Chariots of the Gods, Unsolved Mysteries of the Past, published in 1968, and The Unknown History of Mankind a hundred thousand years ago, according to which life on Earth was brought over by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. It is his ideas that form a significant part of what is known as the ancient alien or astronaut theory. According to him, these extraterrestrial visitors had technology far beyond what humans possessed. He believes that these aliens are often mistaken for gods of course they call them gods because of their advanced abilities and are responsible for many of the technological and cultural leaps that occurred in the ancient world, for which historians, archaeologists, and anthropologists have no logical explanation. Van Daniken tells of three main periods of visitation by advanced extraterrestrial races. According to him, the first such occurred even before time immemorial, more than one or two million years ago, then again during the prehistoric times, until about the 6th or 7th millennium BC, and from these visits we can find traces, the ancient monuments. The third visit was in biblical times, around 2500 BC. Eric von Däniken argues that evidence of these visits can be found in archaeological artifacts and points to monumental structures such as the Egyptian pyramids, Stonehenge, the statues on Easter Island, and many others, suggesting that their construction required technology and knowledge that the ancient people could not possess without outside help. In addition, he interpreted certain religious texts, myths, and ancient artworks as descriptions or depictions of these extraterrestrial visitors. For example, the biblical account of the prophet Ezekiel's encounter with a flying chariot and a winged creature is a possible encounter with an alien spacecraft. In fact, Eric von Däniken was one of the first to boldly state that when ancient texts from around the world speak of flying vehicles and flying people, they are not just using imaginary metaphors. Instead, they are actual descriptions of advanced alien races. The book of Ezekiel, which is one of the major prophetic books in the Old Testament of the Bible, details possible alien encounters. Ezekiel is a high priest who meets a being that he initially regards as God and falls on his knees to pray to him. But very soon he realizes that it is not God and recounts in detail what he saw, including the movement of wings that caused a great noise. Ezekiel also describes the device by which the winged creature moved, being amazed because it was unlike any wheel of his time, as it could move forward, backward, left, and right without moving the steering wheel. Interestingly, in the original text of Ezekiel, the word God does not appear, but instead speaks of the splendor of the highest. Eric von Däniken suggests that God, as the original source, should not need a vehicle to get around 
and the story of Ezekiel may refer to an extraterrestrial object that makes a huge noise when it descends from heaven. In his book The Chariots of the Gods, Van Daniken also tells about Enoch by interpreting the Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish religious book not found in the canonical Bible that is attributed to Enoch, Noah's great-grandfather. The book describes Enoch's encounters with sons of God, who some believe to be angels, but Von Daniken suggests they were extraterrestrials. He believes that Enoch was taken aboard a spaceship where he was trained in various sciences, then returned to Earth with incredibly advanced knowledge for his time. The Book of Enoch mentions Enoch's journeys through heaven and Earth, and Von Daniken believes these may be accounts of ancient interstellar travel in particular. But what about the stories of Moses? The book of Exodus describes a bush engulfed in flames that did not burn and that spoke to Moses, introducing itself to him as God. Donakin theorizes that Moses' encounter with the burning bush, as described in the Bible, may have been a misinterpreted technological interaction with an extraterrestrial being or device. He also suggests that the Ten Commandments were not given directly by God, but were written by an advanced, laser-like technological device provided by these visitors. The Ark of the Covenant, in which the Ten Commandments of God are placed, has also been interpreted as an extraterrestrial object said to emit strange energy similar to nuclear radiation. Some scholars suggest that the walls of the city of Jericho fell precisely with the help of the energy contained in the Ark of the Covenant. And the Book of Samuel describes how anyone who came too close to the Ark of the Covenant died, experiencing symptoms such as pale skin and falling off nails, fingers, and feet. In 1971, Eric von Doniken attended the Sanskrit College in Calcutta, India, where he met Professor Dilip Kanjilal. Professor Kanjilal is concerned with modernizing old Indian texts, revealing stories of gods using flying machines known as vimanas to travel between heaven and earth. The Vedic texts, especially the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, contain several descriptions of epic battles and modern weapons, chariots flying in the sky, and other such strange phenomena. For example, in the Mahabharata there is a description of a weapon called Brahmastra that has the power to destroy entire cities and cause mass destruction, similar to modern descriptions of nuclear weapons. Moreover, the Vimans described in these texts, often translated as chariots, are said to traverse the sky and space and are described with such precision that they resemble modern depictions of airplanes or spaceships. The texts provide detailed descriptions of the appearance of the Vimanas, how they moved from place to place, and what was required to rule them. If ancient records describe air battles and advanced flight technology, is it possible that our linear view of history is wrong? Maybe it's just that our modern civilization is starting to rediscover a technology that existed thousands of years ago. For ancient astronaut theorists such as Eric von Daniken and Zechariah Sitchin, all these stories of sky gods are not myths, but historical accounts, and the war between the gods may be describing a real alien conflict in which Earth is one of their battlefields. In 1931, French anthropologist Marcel Griol ventured into the desert of Mali, West Africa, to meet a mysterious and little-known tribe called the Dogon. Captured by their rich culture and traditions, Griol began collecting and recording their legends, soon noticing striking parallels with ancient astronauts found around the world. These are stories about amphibious gods called Nomo, who are celestial beings, inhabit the sea, and bestow upon humanity profound knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, and science. The Dogon believed that the Nomo were extraterrestrial deities, requiring an aquatic environment to survive, but also capable of daring to set foot on land. The Dogon explained that their creator god Nomo descended from the sky amid a violent storm of thunder, smoke, and lightning. But the aspect that really amazed Griol and later shocked the whole world was not the Dogon legends about the amphibian gods, but their claim about the origins of these water creatures. It is about a star, invisible to the naked eye, discovered only by modern astronomers in 1862, 
but apparently known to the Dogon from long ago. When the French researcher first spoke to Dogon priests about the Nomo in the 1930s, they claimed that these beings originated in the Sirius star system. But notice, not from Sirius A, the bright star that is well known and visible in the evening sky, but rather from its tiny companion, a dying star known as Sirius B, detectable only with powerful telescopes. So how could such a remote African tribe know about the existence of this star long before it was discovered by modern astronomy? While the star Sirius A has figured prominently in the mythologies of the Persians, Hindus, Romans, Polynesians, and many others, with the Egyptians even basing their calendar on it, the Dogon's knowledge of the elusive Sirius B makes us wonder. Could this tribe ever have possessed technology with which to explore the invisible cosmos? Or is there an even deeper extraterrestrial explanation? The Dogon's detailed understanding of the Sirius system is astounding. They call Sirius A Sigitolo, and the smaller companion star Sirius B they christen Potolo. They were aware of the 50-year orbital period of the two stars. They knew that the invisible star was extremely dense and followed an elliptical orbit around Sirius A. They also knew that Sirius B was the size of Earth and rotated on its axis. Remarkably, these descriptions are consistent with what we know today about the white dwarf star Sirius B. Dogon knowledge of the Sirius star system is inexplicable and baffles experts. In an age devoid of telescopes, how could this tribe have amassed such astronomical knowledge? Is it from there that many people have speculated that perhaps this information was relayed to them by aliens, an idea that cannot be completely dismissed given the accuracy of their information? Okay, let's assume so. But if the Dogon accounts of the Nomo amphibian gods are true, and these beings do indeed originate from Sirius B, then the logical question follows. Did these space visitors only interact with the desert Dogon tribe? Or perhaps they shared their wisdom with other people in different regions? Similar stories of amphibious beings giving knowledge to mankind exist in many different places all over the world. Do not these repeated accounts of aquatic, dolphin-like human teachers who came from the stars, who educate and help mankind by day and retire to the ocean by night, hint at some common celestial origin? And also, can we assume that many different cosmic races have visited and interacted with us? According to Zechariah Sitchin, who interprets the Sumerian creation myth, the modern human race was created by Enlil and Enki, the Anunnaki brothers, who are described as beings who came from heaven, and who, through genetic engineering, combined their DNA with that of Homo erectus, and thus created Homo sapiens. But is there any evidence for this theory? Mathematicians and scientists such as Vladimir Sherbak and Maxim Makukov have been studying the human genome and hypothesizing the existence of a complex hidden code in our DNA. They claim that this code includes precise mathematical patterns and an unknown symbolic language, seemingly pointing to an extraterrestrial imprint on our genetic blueprint. According to them, the probability that our DNA is arranged in this particular way is 1 in 10 trillion, which seems improbable to be a mere coincidence. So they, like Sitchin, suggest that our genetic code was deliberately manipulated by an advanced extraterrestrial intelligence in the distant past in order to enhance our intellectual abilities. According to the ancient astronaut theory, this code in our DNA gives us the much sought after evidence of extraterrestrial intervention in our development as a human race. So rather than expecting to find physical artifacts like a crashed spaceship or a futuristic weapon, these scientists believe that the most compelling evidence of extraterrestrial influence lies within ourselves, our DNA and the hidden knowledge encoded within it. The idea that our genetic code bears the imprint of extraterrestrial influence may seem audacious to many of you. But life as we understand it on Earth is not the exception in the universe, but rather the norm. The universe is full of life. Everything is alive, 
Everything is consciousness, and life is everywhere in the universe because it is the universe itself. And we must begin to accept that we are not alone. There have been, are, and will be many other extraterrestrial civilizations. It's just that in the past, our ancestors regarded them as gods. If we want to set out on the artist's search for the truth, we must all summon up the courage to leave the lines along which we have thought until now and as the first step, begin to doubt everything that we previously accepted as correct and true. Can we still afford to close our eyes and stop up our ears because new ideas are supposed to be heretical and absurd? Eric Von Duniken. Tell us in the comments which theory you support, divine beings or alien visitors. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and for more ancient mysteries, watch the related videos on the screen next. Keep your minds open, and until we meet again.